Welcome to the online service of the Swiss Home Park Primitive Methodist Church. We pray that you are blessed by what you hear this morning. I will be reading today from the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. That's Revelation 2, 1 through 7, and it is on page 1875 of your pew Bible. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered, and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent, and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Thank you, Krista. Appreciate you reading for us today. I'm going to ask that you would join me as we look to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to be together in your house. We thank you for the privilege to have your word before us. Help us by faith, we pray, to not just understand it, but to be ready and willing to apply it to our heart. For your honor and for your glory, we pray and ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Krista read for us today from Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 3 consists of letters to seven churches. These seven churches were in Asia Minor, known today as modern-day Turkey. The message we know is from the Lord, and in His hand He is holding the seven stars in His right hand, and He's walking among the seven lampstands. We know the lampstands represent the, the churches and the stars representing those leaders, those pastors of that work. These words from the Lord specifically to the church, and today as we look at the church in Ephesus, Ephesus was on the west coast of this region. This city was, was famous for its temple of Diana, Acts chapter 19, verse 27 records that specific fact. People from all over the Mediterranean would come here to worship the goddess. And so here today, as we look at the church of Ephesus, Jesus has some wonderful words, wonderful words as he would commend the church for their work. As Krista read for us today from chapter 2, beginning in verse 2, Jesus simply said, first of all, I know your works. I know what you're doing. And Jesus just didn't say it in some just brief stroke of the brush, but he was very specific when he said simply, I know your works, I know your deeds. And I know and understand basically how hard you're working in this region. How hard you work and, and your perseverance in that effort to share the truth of the gospel. He also told them that he understands that they cannot tolerate evil and wicked people. He knows and understands that they have tested who have made claims to be apostles. And those tests have revealed that that claim truly was not right. Jesus makes it very clear in verses 2 and 3 how the church in Ephesus has persevered hardship. They persevered hardship for the cause of Christ and they haven't grown weary. So Jesus is applauding the church and giving them these words to just encourage them for what they've done and the stands that they have taken. But Jesus also wants the church to know that that's not the end of his message. 
In verse 4, Jesus said, I have something against you. Jesus, in this particular verse now, He's not giving the church commendations. He's condemning the church. He makes it very clear. He said, I have something against you because you've lost your first love. Last week in church, we were talking about different songs and how these were specific to love and the season of Valentine's Day. Well, today there's another song that talks about losing your first love. And we remember the righteous brothers and you've lost that loving feeling. I don't think Jesus was singing that to them at this time, but he made it very clear in this instance, the church at Ephesus, they've lost their first love. These were hardworking individuals, but no longer now have they been able to understand the same passion for Christ that they first experienced when this journey began. Jesus said, oh, you're hardworking, you're doing amazing things, but what is your driver? What is the basis? What is the reason? Do you have the same passion for Christ and others as when you first began this journey? Did your work now, was it motivated because of the love of Jesus and the love of others? But was your work motivated for the sake of works? You see, our commitment to doing good things, our commitment to seeing things happen in a right and positive way is really worthless unless it's motivated by love. I'm sure you know a lot of people today who are nice people. A lot of people today who do good things and help people. But love is not the driver. The love of God, the love of Christ, and the love of others because of what we know through Christ as we have a relationship with our Heavenly Father is not the basis for why we do those things. Our commitment to do good is worthless unless it's motivated by love. Strong words that Jesus brings to the church that He brings this spirit of commendation uh, as He condemns the church. Our love for Jesus, our love for Jesus, is it the basis for everything that we do? Our love for others, is it the basis for what we do? Think about this. We love Christ. Because of loving Christ, we can understand now a relationship with our Heavenly Father. As a result of this love, we now can see what it means to understand what it means to love one another. And as a result of wanting to love one another more and more, it causes us to be compelled to reach out into our culture, just as the church at Ephesus did, into this pagan-filled society to share the love of Jesus. Why? Because we love them. Not just because it's the right thing to do, but love drives us and love motivates us to be this ambassador and to bring this message of hope to them. Jesus said, you've done wonderful things here, but I have a problem. I gave you a lot of compliments, but now I'm going to condemn what's happening because that love, that understanding that you had, that warmth, that zeal, that relationship that we once experienced, it's not there. Our love for Christ must exceed any love that we have even for our closest relative. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. Our love for Christ must be the basis for our every word, our every deed. Paul writes to the Corinthian church, in chapter 13, he makes it very clear in verse 3. He said, even the one who would give of themselves in the spirit of a martyr and give their life, but yet if they do it without love, it's for nothing. It means nothing. They lost that feeling. They lost that fervor. They lost that zeal. They lost that passion, that driver. That 13th chapter of the first letter to the Corinthian church makes it very clear. Everything is meaningless if we have not love. Last week we considered what it meant to be loved by God. 
and what it means for us to now love others. And because of that, it allows us to reach and minister into areas because of that relationship with Almighty God. Today, Paul, the letter makes it very clear. The church at Ephesus doing amazing things. But now, the words that Jesus brings simply, the words of condemnation. You lost your first love. Where are you at today? Are you in a relationship with Christ where you can receive His words of praise? That, that's the easy part. But the test of the relationship and the depth of a relationship comes when we can receive the critical words as well, the words of condemnation. Christ is saying this needs to take place if we are to continue. I have something against you. And because of these things, after these words of, of critique that, that he brings to them and condemns them, he now gives them a command. And the command simply is this. Repent. Verse 5. Remember from where you have fallen and repent. Remember, when we repent, it simply means this, that I'm going to do a 180 degree turn from the direction I'm in right now. I'm no longer going to continue on this pathway because it's going to lead me to death and to destruction. And Jesus, when he sees what's happening here, knows that the only answer for this church is to repent and to turn and to go back. And the scripture says, from where you came from. And where they came from in this instance was that loving relationship with Almighty God through Jesus Christ. When I repent, I do that 180 degree turn and I remember that he is faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. The promise of God. We may say, well, it's wrong. I've done nothing wrong. I haven't sinned. Well, the Bible says that if we say we have no sin, we're a liar. And the truth is not in us. And here are the very words of Jesus giving praise, but then also pointing out the shortcoming. Friends, are we listening? When we read these letters that Christ writes to the church, he simply says this, he who has an ear, let him hear. It's easy to receive the words of praise. But now when Jesus makes it very clear where our shortcomings are, do we listen? And do we want to hear these words today? The problem simply is this, unless they repent, the word says, the lampstand would be removed. Jesus is not going to allow this to continue. He's not going to allow this direction to continue to move in the way that it's headed right now. And the answer simply is repent and go back the other way. Do you hear what he's saying to you today? It's easy to say, yeah, you're wonderful. But it's hard to receive sometimes the, the instruction that I'm wrong. But aren't you glad today that Jesus doesn't say you're wrong and turn away from you and leave you hanging? But he gives you that understanding of what it means to repent, to confess, to call upon him, and to believe in your heart to know that these things are true. And by the blood of the Lamb, that blood that was shed for your sin and mine can wash and cleanse and renew us and restore us to that relationship that we once knew. Jesus not only told the church that they need to repent, but he said, I want you to remember, I want you to remember where you came from. Let's say it this way. Today, can you remember the day that you came to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you remember the time in your life when you realized that, that, that you were a sinner and that the life that you were leading was leading you far away from the kingdom of God and you understood what it meant as the love of God reached down and touched your heart and at that point you knew that load, that weight that you were carrying, that he could take that from you and by faith you could admit and believe and confess in your heart that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord and at that point you invited him into your heart. Do you remember that time? That love, that understanding, that victory, that release. 
Jesus said, think about that as you repent. As you remember, look back and see how the church in Ephesus started. See who was instrumental in bringing you to this. Think about those wonderful times that you had. Maybe today you're sitting here thinking about that time at a youth retreat. Maybe it's summer camp. Maybe the evangelist was at your church. Maybe it was in a Sunday school. Maybe it was in your bed at home. Maybe you had memories of, 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 of a grandmother, of a mother, of an up relative who had ministered to you, and all of a sudden it clicked, it worked, and at that point, by faith, you accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. Jesus said, remember that. And that relationship, how it grew, and it just developed out of a love for him and for others. Your warmth, your zeal, your desire for Christ. Don't just go through the motions of good works. Don't just think going through life and doing the good things is all that really matter. You see, it really, it really doesn't count if they're not validated by and driven by and motivated by your love for Almighty God through Jesus Christ. If we're working on those things that bring us joy out of selfish ambition, Jesus is telling the church, you've missed it. It's easy to accept the words of praise. It's hard to accept the words sometimes of condemnation. But aren't you glad that Jesus gives us the command to turn and to remember and to repent and to see that it can all be made new. Therefore, old things are passed away and now all things have become new. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm not perfect. And I know I need more than ever to be reminded of the love that God had for me and still does. And because of that, it causes me to strengthen and deepen my relationship with him. And this is what he wanted the church to understand because without this, everything else is built upon a foolish, foolish foundation. So what's he telling you today? We heard what he's told the church at Ephesus. What's he telling the church at Swiss Home Park? What's he telling us here at the Swiss Home Park Church? So this is where I need you to fill in the blanks. When it comes to the words of praise, what is Jesus saying today to the Swiss Home Park Church? You write them down. We just had our review of our past year of ministry. We looked at finances. We looked at statistical numbers. But to me, the most exciting part of that whole review is to see the faithfulness of God in so many ways. And then just in that recap of areas of ministry from January through December, how it warms my heart to see what's happened there. And so we asked the simple question, just as the church at Ephesus was now being reminded, was it done out of the motivation of just doing works, or was it driven because of your love for God and for others? The standard that the church in Ephesus was being reminded of is that same standard that we're being reminded of today. First of all, what is God saying, yea, Swiss Elm Park for? And we give him glory for that past year. We give him glory for each one of those things that occurred for the cause of outreach and to reach souls for Christ. Our relationship is only as strong as our ability now to receive the words of critique. Yes, he commended the church at Ephesus, but he also brought words of condemnation. What is God saying to us at Swiss Home Park today that says, hey, listen, it's good, but here's some things too. None of us are perfect. 
We all have blood flowing through our veins. We all fall short of the glory of God, but aren't you so glad that through Jesus we can rise to him and give him honor and praise for forgiveness and love and to listen what he says. As we listen, the same words that he told the church at Ephesus, hey, we need to repent. Is there something today that you need to repent of? Is there something today that I need to repent of? Is there something today that I need to be reminded of as I think as my relationship with Christ began as I became a new creation in Him and, and, and now walked in the fullness of His love as I was able, as Paul says, to reach up and hold my hands and cry, Abba, Father, as I think of those things today, doesn't it give me a, an understanding in my heart of how much more needs to be done? You see, the church at Ephesus was able to do these things because, yes, they exhibited and knew and understood what it meant to love God and love each other. And that caused them to be victorious in so many ways, especially in that city where people were coming from all over the region to, to worship that goddess. They weren't coming to worship God. We have many challenges today in this world. There are many things that are happening around us that are such an offense and an abomination to the kingdom of God. And if we're going to be successful and if we're going to be fruitful and if we're going to proclaim victory in this world today, we have to more than ever visit and understand how important it is to love God. How important it is to know and understand Him through our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. And because of these things, it enables us to love one another and to know that Jesus came and died for each and every one of them. Jesus wanted the church at Ephesus to know that that's the basis for everything that will be done in ministry and as well at Swiss Home Park. Why were they so successful? Why were they able, they were able to do the things that they did? I believe because they loved God. They loved each other. And Jesus said, you've, you've lost that. Bring it back. And when we bring that back, it takes us to the next level as we love God and we love others. What attitude should I carry forth now in this year of service as the church? After this message, we're going to install officers for the year. We're going to give you a challenge and charge you to just be faithful to these things as we consider the opportunities that are in front of us and know and understand the commitment more than ever it's going to take to, be, to remain faithful. The first part of it is loving God and loving each other. The second part simply is this, a, a servant attitude. I believe the church at Ephesus demonstrated that as they endured hardship and perseverance and all the things that were thrown their way, that servant attitude built upon a love of God and others was a, was a driver in their everyday life. What about you? What about me? Is the desire of my heart to serve others, to meet their needs, to put the interests of everybody else in front of me? Remember the acronym for the word joy. Jesus, others, and yourself. For the joy that was set before him, Jesus came and he endured the cross. He came to seek and to save the lost. He came to serve others. Another reason for success at Ephesus and another reason that we need to be reminded of this today is not just loving God and loving others and, and being a servant, but it's to be accountable. We're going to charge you in a few minutes to consider being accountable, meaning to justify our actions and decisions. There are many things that are thrown at us each day that, that cause us to understand more than ever the need for the Word of God and its truth and its way to brightly illuminate the path that we would follow. And as we this morning commit ourselves anew and afresh here at the church at Swiss Home Park, God, I want to love you more than ever. I want to be able to love people more than ever. And God, create and make in me that servant heart that will be accountable to my brothers and sisters as we stand before you. Because we know one day we will have to give that ultimate account before you. So grateful for the church and for the, the word of God and, and for the checks and balances that we have. You did a good job today. Might not get that the next day. Maybe we made a 
just a bad choice. We just said something we shouldn't have. We, we went somewhere we should not have. Aren't you grateful for forgiveness? And aren't you glad as well to be accountable? You see, in this whole process, the, the church at Ephesus would thrive, not just because of, of, of that, but being honest. And if they were going to move and understand what God wanted from them at this point, they would have to be honest with themselves and demonstrate that spirit of integrity. We'll ask each one of you to consider what it means to be a servant, to be accountable, and to exhibit a spirit of integrity. Being honest along the way in the world that's just plagued with evil and darkness and so many just clouds of, of just darkness around us. God wants us as the church to stand today and demonstrate what pure love is, what a servant heart is, what it means to be accountable and to show integrity and finally to demonstrate a spirit of excellence. This is for the Lord. It's not table scraps. It's not, well, if nothing else is working, <coughs> I might work it into my schedule. If nothing else better comes along, maybe you can count on me for this outreach. Well, I don't know. We, this sort of got freezer burn at home. Let's give it to the church. They'll know what to do with it. Friends, we're talking about a spirit of excellence as we serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I believe this is what the church at Ephesus wanted, and I believe this is what we want as well at Swissome Park. God has been good, God has been faithful, but as we look ahead to this year and our commitment to renew and afresh our resolve to serve Him, may we always be reminded from this lesson with the church at Ephesus of the essential foundation of the love of God and the love of others being first and foremost. As we move ahead in this year at Swiss Home Park, God, keep our hearts humble. God, keep our hearts mindful of what it means to be a servant, to be accountable, to be honest, to have that spirit of integrity, and to give our best for Jesus. One of my mom's favorite songs was titled, Our Best. Hear ye the master's call. Hear ye the master's call. The song goes on to say, our talents may be few, these may be small, but unto him that is due, it's our best and our all. The church at Ephesus had, had great work to do. And aren't you grateful for that correction along the way? The Bible makes it very clear that there's discipline, there's chastening to, to the one we love. And I'm so grateful that, that God keeps us in line. And God corrects us, He chastens us, and He points it out. Here's what you're doing great in Swiss Home Park, yeah! But here's some things that you need to consider today. Will you hear that? And if you will, here's the answer. Repent. Remember where you came from. And keep that servant attitude that will be accountable, that will be honest, and that will demonstrate a spirit of excellence for the neighborhood of Swiss Home Park, for the surrounding community of Allegheny County and Pennsylvania, the United States, and the world. Because to the one who overcomes, to the one who has an ear, let him hear, and to the one who overcomes, Jesus promises this reward of eternity. There could be a little resistance, but with perseverance and with hard work and a spirit that desires nothing more for their relationship with God and others to be just deepened in love, it will compel us as a church to experience and see things for the glory of God that we never realized before. My prayer today is will you join me in this call? Will you join with me in this challenge today? that together we can renew afresh and say, God, use me. And God, may I never drift from that understanding of you and that love and that passion in my life. There's work to be done. But the work is worthless if it's done without love. 
Paul said it's in vain. Ephesus was reminded. Swissom Park today, we're reminded. And by faith, may we believe and trust God for great and mighty things. But first, that love, that first love. May we never hear those words, you lost your first love. If so, maybe you're sitting here today struggling, saying, I think I may have. I think I'm robotic. I think I'm mechanical. I, I do things, and, and it's not driven by love. It's just because that's what you do. Or maybe you're sitting here today saying, it's good, it's great, and we applaud that. But wherever you are today, we want to make sure that we can press ahead and see great victory and see the kingdom exalted by embracing that love through Jesus Christ more than ever and to see neighbors, to see friends, to see family members, to hear of people in groves coming to Christ because of you and me today embracing that love and sharing it with others. Please pray with me. Father, we love you, and we praise you for Jesus. Help us now, Lord, to seriously ask the question, have we lost that first love? Do we know what it truly means to be growing deeper in love with you and Jesus and enabling us to share your love with others? We have a lot of work to do here at Swiss Elm Park, just as the church in Ephesus did, but we know, Lord, with that as our foundation, we can be the servants, we can be accountable. We can demonstrate integrity and have that spirit of excellence that will cause you to be exalted and men drawn to thee. This is our prayer by faith as we lift it to you with a calm and a peace and assurance, asking in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for watching us this morning. If you'd like to get in touch with us, please go to www.swisshomeparkpmchurch.com. We pray God's blessings upon you as the week goes by.